Hello and welcome to this episode of How to Be a Great Player. I am of course wearing the beautiful cloak and hood that the wonderful Sinbin made for me and uh, it's based on that illustration of Sean Isaacs uh, of the GM character that used to run the uh, role-playing game that was on our other channel, Bacon Battalion RPG. Now, speaking of, on that channel this week, as a matter of fact, our new role-playing game launched, where I run the game, and I have four players from literally across the globe, one from the USA, one from UK, one from Germany, one from Australia, and of course myself from South Africa, and uh, we run through the Adventures of the Windswift. And what I like particularly about this series is that at the end of every episode, we go through the adventure that has happened so far, and the guys unpack it from a player perspective. Why did they have their character do that? Why did they make those decisions? I unpack it from a GM's perspective to say, well, you know, what's the story? Why did I choose this? Why didn't I choose that? What was my plan? And have we managed to, to follow it? So go and check that out if you haven't already. Now, today's video topic was inspired by a comment written by somebody on the channel for one of the videos a few weeks ago, where they said, how do they play this wonderful role-playing game that we have if they have some kind of disability or some kind of problem in actual real life? How do they create characters that are interesting, that can be perhaps inspired by their own shortcomings uh, in the real world. Now, it's a very interesting question, and I gave it some thought, and I have come up with at least what I think are viable solutions to problems that we might have in the real world and that we can make use of in the fantasy world. If we look at physical problems, Generally speaking, there are two broad categories of physical problems that could have an impact on the game. And the one is an actual disability, such as, say, deafness, blindness, for example. And the other is the voice. Having a monotonous voice that doesn't rise or sink or lower or raise, or having a very soft voice, or being a very timid sort of voice. Not having a physical presence at the table can be a problem. So how do you turn it to your advantage? Well, not everyone is a vocalist, not everyone is an actor, and so for those of you that aren't, there are a few choices. If you manage to have a voice where you can modulate and change tone and pitch and that kind of thing, then you're fine. Just speak normally as you would normally speak and try to personally imagine what your character is feeling like. Now, you don't have to burst into tears if your character is sad, but just remember the last time that you were sad. Were you speaking loudly? Were you making jokes? Were you being rambunctious? Or were you sighing and being a little bit more thoughtful and perhaps reflective on the words and the ways that you were talking? Try and remember emotions that you have felt and then to convey those in that situation. I'm not saying try and convey sadness. I'm trying to, con I'm trying to say convey how you behaved when you were feeling sad. This is a particular form of acting, uh, which uh, they talk about method acting. You, re you, you actually experience the emotions that you go through. So that's one of the options. The other option, of course, is the uh, put yourself physically into the position of what you're going through, and then your voice will follow suit. So physically cry, and you will sound as if you are crying. I think that goes without saying. If you have a monotonous voice, however, it's a great opportunity for you to be able to create a character who has the same affliction. The elves, for example, perhaps they are monotonous. They all speak in the same tone, and that's just how the race works. Try and chat to the GM privately and say, listen, this is what I'd like to do because I think this is a great way of allowing my particular voice to work in the context. Uh, of the game. Uh, my voice at the moment, I've got a bit of a throat infection, so I keep swallowing. I do apologize. Take what you have and try and incorporate it from a vocal perspective. So if you're monotonous, create a monotonous character, but make sure the entire race is like that, so that when the GM runs those particular races, they too speak in a fairly flat tone without much expression. This allows them to sound as if they're all from the same race and creates a much more interesting environment than one that has simply an individual who has the same problem. 
So that's with voice. If you have a very timid voice, if you have a very soft voice, well, perhaps your character has a bell that they use to try and get attention. So go and pick up a bell from wherever you can, and whenever you want to speak, ring the bell. Turn it into something that is to be enjoyed and relished and shared rather than something that keeps you back. Embrace your issues as I have done and as many others have. Embrace them and make them your own. Well, that brings me to the next set of problems that one might have. The mental problems. Now, I'm not talking disabilities that go beyond, I would say, those that most of us already have, but bear with me here. If you have memory issues, you don't remember stuff very well, uh, memory is not your strong point, names you're useless with and all that kind of stuff, apart from writing it down, and I know everyone will just say, oh, I'll just write it down. Yeah, but you get you know, writing it down can be a problem too, or you don't remember what you wrote down and that kind of thing. Have a character who's got the same thing. Make it part of the humor. And instead of going, oh, I don't remember. What's the, char what, what's the NPC's name? Oh, I don't remember. Instead of just saying that, rather say, hey, Harry, how you doing? Your name is not Harry? I could have sworn it was Harry. Are you sure it's not Harry? All right, well, that's fine, Martha. Uh, we'll just go from there. Turn it into something that becomes amusing. In its own way, it will help you also to uh, be less frustrated with yourself. That's the whole thing that I am aiming for in this particular video, is embrace the things that you see as limitations, disabilities, disadvantages, and turn them into an advantage. And usually that's through the use of humor or by embracing it in such a way that you become, you own it, you take ownership of that situation. Now for those of us that have got problems with focus, if you have problems with focus, and a lot of us generally do, if you have a lot of problems with focus, again, create a character who has focusing issues, but then play it up. In the middle of combat, you might, as the person, be focused because it's grabbed your attention long enough for you to stay on it. Have your PC suddenly in the middle of the swing. Oh, look at that. There's a funny looking stuff. Whoa, as he ducks. Make it part of the character. Make it part of the humor. Make it part of the environment that your character is in so that you can literally learn how to deal with it. And I'm moving forward here quite quickly because I want to get to the ultimate uh, solution or compromise or outcome that I, I think will help benefit everyone. Spiritually, 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 this is a, another area and that's moral issues. If you're in a game and people are doing things that you consider to be incredibly amoral, whether that's the players or the PCs, you can create a character who embodies your morals and who, although mustn't be too preachy about them, can certainly use them to their advantage and make suggestions based on that. So that morality starts to become inculcated into the game. If you feel that in real life it's not good to go around killing people, then in the game you shouldn't do that either unless you want to do the exact opposite, in which case, well, then knock yourself out. The idea is that if you are personally opposed to an action that the PCs are taking, don't just stand back, actually explore it, unpack it, try and figure out why it is personally moralistic for you, but not for somebody else. It might give you a better perspective on life. Personal issues. Now, personal issues could be things like sexuality. It could be things like self-confidence. It could be a whole different range of things. Use your game to explore those options. I've had many players, many, many, many players who have had issues with uh, their own lifestyles and things, and they've played characters in the game to try and unpack and to get used to how other people, other PCs, other NPCs respond to their character who's got that particular thing. Now, this, of course, arranges across the board. And the important thing here, and this is my final point on the matter, is that whatever it is that you have, whether it's a mental issue, whether it's a sexual issue, whether it's a spiritual issue, whether it's a physical issue, there are two ways of looking at them. One is that they are a burden and that they are something to be shunned and looked away from and fought against and raged against. And there are others who accept, embrace and embody them. 
Now, I have a few issues. I think everybody does. And I had a few issues which, through role playing, have helped me overcome them or embrace them and take them on as my own. It becomes very, very difficult for you to feel negative or put down upon by someone else revealing or talking about your disability if you own it, if you claim it as yours. So that is my message, is if you have a monotonous voice or if you have a disability or if you have a problem with focusing, make it your own. Claim it, embrace it and play with it. Because the moment you play with these things, the moment you start looking at them as opportunities for entertainment, as opportunities for exploring in a safe environment, because what safer environment do we have than in a role-playing space where you're surrounded by your friends who are all playing weird and wonderful creatures, what safer space do you have for exploring and understanding and coming to terms with those issues than in a role-playing game? I can think of none better. So to all of you, I hope this has maybe given you some insight. And, 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 and actually, before I finish off, something very important to say is that if you have somebody in your group who has an issue and who seems to be struggling with it, this is an opportunity for you to extend your olive branch as a player and say, hey, let's work together with it. What if our characters are brother and sister and my character looks after your brother and looks after your character who... Um, doesn't like being looked after because he wants to be independent. And we explore those options. What if my character hates your kind, shuns those that like to sleep with apples as opposed to pears? What if my character has that? And we can explore that and come to terms and, and discover it. So you as a player have the opportunity to either embrace your own problems or to help someone who has problems embrace theirs and to see that generally speaking, our greatest weaknesses can also become our greatest strength if we just learn to look at them from an opportunistic point of view rather than from a disadvantageous point of view. So until next time, I wish you and yours the happiest of playing.